Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmed Gumi has urged the government not to take the threat by the kidnappers of students of Greenfield University, Kaduna, lightly. He said the Central Bank of Nigeria should pay the 100 million naira ransom being demanded by the kidnappers of the students. A parent of one of the abductees had lamented that the bandits were still insisting on their demands and threatening to kill the students. But really, what should the government do in this situation? Because both choices have dire consequences. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Obadiah Meilafia. He is a former CBN deputy director. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you so very much for having me. Great. Uh, great nation, good people. Great. Um, Sheikh Gumi, we all know, is a very controversial person and he keeps coming up in the news. You know, he's always having something to say uh, when it comes to this issue of banditry. And for a lot of people, they've been calling for his head on the chopping board. And some other people are still wondering why he's walking free and making these comments that one would actually um, frown at. But he has, uh, at some point, uh, one of the parents had come out to say, look, um, we were told to pay a certain amount of money so our uh, child could be released to us. And Sheikh Gumi pointed us in that direction. So that child has been released. So really, can we still say that Sheikh Gumi is not working in the interest of the people? This tragedy is not about Sheikh Gumi. This tragedy is about the lives of our very precious young people, the hope of our future. Before we pontificate, let us for a moment place ourselves in the shoes of those young people. This is the rainy season. For several weeks, they are staying in the forest. They, they have no home. They are lying outside. Come rain, come shine. Cold, heat, mosquitoes. Come thunder, come storms. With guns pointed at their heads. With threats for their lives to be snuffed off at any moment. As you know, five of their colleagues have already been killed. One was buried on Saturday. I saw the television broadcast of the funeral. The parents and the family are heartbroken. So before we pontificate about other people who to me are very marginal, their life is not worth a fraction of the lives of these young people. So I, I, I'm not even interested in Sheikh Gumi. I'm not at all interested in him hmm. because he has a very dubious record himself. He has to explain to people the circumstances in which he was allegedly kicked out of Saudi Arabia. And during a meeting with some of the kidnappers, he actually said, allegedly, he was quoted as saying that it is Christian soldiers who have been doing most of the killings. I mean, this is astonishing. And I don't see, looking through his glazed eyes, I don't see any milk of compassion for these people. Instead, what is being dished out to us is threats that we must do to satisfy the kidnappers. Obviously to him, the kidnappers are more important than the people kidnapped. So I'm not at all interested in a person like Sheikh uh, Gumi. Well, he doesn't interest me at all. I, I, I know that you're not interested, but I want to push you further a little bit. Now, these students are caught in between a Sheikh Gumi and a Governor El Rufai. 
The governor, on one hand, is saying he will not pay any form of ransom. As even if his son were to be taken, he would pray for the soul of his son. But then uh, there's also a gumi on the other side, like you have said, who is saying P better pay up or else you're going to risk losing more lives. So uh, we also know that in this country we frown at paying ransom. So um, you're caught in between the devil and the deep blue sea. If you pay these ransoms, you're somewhat funding terrorism. And if you do not pay, you are also risking the lives of children who are supposedly the future of this country. So uh, in this situation, what do the parents of these children do? Who do they turn to? Because the governor or the government of the state is saying they're not going to be a part of this. And then there's a Sheikh Gubi who's there saying, well, we're ready to help you if you bring the money. And the, the amounts of monies that we're talking about here are not meager. So what do these parents do? You know, I said we should put ourselves in the place of those young people. We should also put ourselves in the place of the parents. It is a harrowing tragedy. You said we are caught between the devil and the duplicy. No, we are actually caught between three devils, all of them principalities of the kingdom of darkness, the government of Kaduna State, Sheikh Gumi, and the federal government. The primary duty of government is to secure the lives and properties of its citizens. Any government that fails in that material ontology has completely reneged on its social contract with the people. This thing is more than what we are seeing. It is part of a war being waged on the Nigerian people. And uh, we have to have an approach. Uh, we have to have a solution. Standing here or sitting here, I can never say never to dialogue. So we should keep the door open for dialogue. But let me tell you, if it were people like me that I'm in charge of the affairs of this country, these people have never seen anything yet. We should just borrow a leave from Vladimir Putin of Russia. For many years, Russia was, you know, under an avalanche of kidnapping. It was a notorious thing. Putin took a, a, a position that he and the government of Russia will never negotiate or pay ransom to any terrorists. And we keep calling them bandits and bandits. I'm afraid that the media is in collusion in a way, and with all due respect, you can't be calling killers and murderers bandits. You are being very nice to them. And I know that the MBC has forced a lot of media houses never to use the word terrorists. That actually makes you part of the problem. They are not bandits. The bandit is your Agbero in uh, Agege and all these motorbikes that wants to fleece you and snatch your phone or you know, seize your, 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 pick your pocket and things like that. These are bandits. But people with AK-47, military-grade weapons, rocket launchers, who have been kidnapping, raping, and killing people on a staggering scale, and you still call them uh, bandits? They're not bandits. So anyway, Vladimir Putin never negotiated with them for once. If there was any incident of kidnapping, he would try a military solution. You can be sure of that, that he will never negotiate. He will find a way to settle that score. But, 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 here, but here in Nigeria, but I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry to, I'm sorry to speak in, over uh, you, sir. With, with, so his Bola, with his Bola in, in Lebanon, when they kidnapped Russian diplomats, he left them. He, I was told they went around, found out all their families and wiped out all of them. Vladimir Putin would say, well, you've already taken prisoners. If you like, kill them, but I'm going to kill all your people. Well, 
but but the, um, but, that, today, but that's a government no that has uh, great intel. In I'm sorry to talk over you once again. That's a government that has really good intel, <laughs> and they're working with that intel. Do not forget, I, might yeah. I remind you, our soldiers were unable to find these bandits wherever they were. But then there was a Sheikh Gumi who could go to the same bandits, negotiate with them, come to us and tell us what the bandits want. So, yes, we can applaud the Russian army. And I'm not in any way saying that our army is incapable. But then it looks like a military solution is not really solving anything for us because we have the military who have told us that they, at some point, had you know, um, fought Boko Haram and won them technically. But here we are. We have banditry on one side. We have Boko Haram on one side. A military solution at this point, I'm not sure it's something that we can really say that can work. Well, I know you have an editorial line, but I don't think we are talking about the same people. You are talking about bandits. I don't know them as bandits. They are not bandits. Well, whatever we want to call them, terrorists. They are, they are terrorists. Well, they yes. They are terrorists. And, uh, well, uh, like I said, I don't feel any compassion coming out of Sheikh Gumi, or whoever you call him. But I, I just sense that he's there as an agent or as a go-between uh, in a game that they are playing. Again, you said, well, Russia has intel. That is very true. But if a government doesn't have intel to save the lives of its citizens, then I think it has no business being called a government. Another approach is the Italian approach. What the Italians did in the 70s and 80s, they had very serious kidnapping programs, including the kidnap of a former prime minister, Aldo Moro. It was pathetic. It was very sad. They were asking for so much. In the end, when it was not paid, they are asking to write a letter to his wife, his final testament to his wife. You can't read that without weeping. It's so moving. I was just a student uh, in those days, and it was so moving, so sad. But what the Italian government decided to do was to pass, enact a law that made it criminal to pay even one dime to a kidnapper. In fact, once they hear that somebody's family member has been kidnapped, in Italy, they ordered the banks to freeze the whole accounts of those family members so that they don't even have the choice of saying they can pay anything. In fact, it is the victim's accounts they will freeze first. And there will be absolutely no negotiation. Within a short period, kidnapping completely fizzled out in, uh, in Italy, in Italy. So I think the Italian solution together with the, uh, uh, the Russian solution. And the, 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 um, the Israelis are also experts. They have special forces, well-trained, with intelligence capabilities, capabilities to identify no matter how remotely where these people are and to pound the daylights out of them. Now, always there will be collateral damage. But you see, once you do it, once and for all, you send a signal that you are a responsible government and that you take the duty of protecting your citizens very seriously. But, 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 but when we do cut. this, we're doing it at the expense of lives because like you mentioned while we were having this conversation, people have died. These... A terrorist are sending a message and and you know the average nigerian would be you know worried and would want to even start a GoFundMe to make sure that their child is taken out of custody but, but how many more people have to die for this to even work in the first place i mean passing a law is another process in itself while people are still in custody so really is this a solution that is going to really cost us a lot? And how many parents really want to stand by and watch their children wasted in the hands of terrorists? And I'm not in any way saying that it's okay to negotiate with these terrorists, but I'm saying at what expense? I have, I have a if the government that, decides to go, speaking, with, go with that what you that, so, that solution cannot be on television. Then it will not work. But I have a solution. Trust me. 
I have a solution, but it cannot be on television. Because well, if it is announced on television, it will not work. Let me just simply tell you that if a government put its foot down, stop calling these people bandits, call them the terrorists that they actually are, the devils that they really are, you go on to them face on face, you confront them, you pound them militarily, and you make sure that once and for all you decimate them. If you do that, it will work. And it will send a message to, to the whole world that yes, we have a government that takes a stand in defense of its people. So we you don't know what this thing has done to our country. It has destroyed the moral legitimacy of our government. It has destroyed the very foundation of our democracy. It is a, a humanitarian disaster. It's a terrible and great evil that does serious damage to the very moral soul of our nation. Hmm. I'm curious. This is really what we need to understand. And I don't think this government understands it properly. They don't. Well, you're, 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 you're just taking me right to my next question because I want, I, I want, I'm curious as to, a lot of people have come up with very interesting ideas. Some, like you, claim that they have solutions to the problem. And of course, yesterday, the former Senate president wrote an open letter to Mr. President and he made a lot of recommendations. Um, how come these ideas have not been put forth to the government, especially, I mean, charity begins at home, from the states? all the way before we get to Mr. President. Um, and if they have been put across to them, why has the government not taken these ideas or opinion into consideration? Because it seems like um, arms are being folded and but we're just watching bodies drop. Even though, if you were listening to my first conversation, um, one of my um, guests was saying that we have blown this situation out of proportion. It's not as bad as we make it seem that it's just the media and the opposition that's making it look bad. This man needs to go to the hospital and have his brain examined by a psychiatrist. Okay. It's an insult to the people being who are victims now. It's an insult to their parents. There's nothing like an exaggeration here. We are facing a monstrous evil of the order of Adolf Hitler. This is what is happening in this country. Every single child taken, it hurts me deeply and personally. Because I just remember how some of us grew up. It was a peaceful Nigeria. It was a safe Nigeria. It was a happy Nigeria. Think of yourself as a parent. You send your, school to, to, your children to school. And then they wake you up at night and tell you that he, the child is living in the forest with some kidnappers. You don't know what will befall that child. Well, the trauma of it, the pain of it, well, it is, it is, it is unspeakable. Well, Mr. Uh, Malafia, thank you very much for speaking with us. Unfortunately, we have to go now. Uh, Mr. Obadiah mm -hmm. Malafia uh, is a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. We appreciate you for your thoughts. Let our thoughts and prayers be with these young people. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, well, we'll take a short break now. And when I come back, I'll give you my take. That should pay. That should do any mean, anything means that should bring the children back. It's not a matter of ransom. Anyhow, they know that we should collect the children back. Let them do it, because if there are children, they will do anything to collect their children back. If you are my to say, as in for my own opinion, government should not pay that much. Because if they do, under one will still come out. Well, as in for me, what I will say, that I will, as in I will ask the government to put us into the, in, as in the matter of security. Because if there is enough security, this kind of thing will not happen. In my own opinion, I don't like it, but they have been paying. They have been paying to release all that kidnappers. So I don't think this one will be an exceptional. They should also pay as well, so that they can set the children free. Well, apparently I believe there are better methods to handle situations like this. And um, personally, I, 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 I have great concern for the life of those uh, um, people, those kids who have been uh, taken ransom, but if the government have to 
or meet the obligation so that the lives are secured and are well treated, then I think uh, 100 million naira as compared to what uh, some of the senators currently earn in the house should be a token and a chicken change. The government should not pay because if the government should pay that money now, another set will come up tomorrow. They will say that they, should, they are strong, so 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 thing. They want to fight for them. They are fighting for this thing. No, the government should not pay. The government should find a way. It's their right to find a way and release those children, students. Here's my take. Uh, the sincerity of purpose, uh, you know, in Nigeria is the way forward. Sincerity is key in addressing all of these issues that are cropping up from all regions. Now, until our leaders, security agencies, and even us, the people, uh, you know, start telling ourselves the truth, we may never achieve anything. We have held on to and peddled so many lies over the years that now we're in a difficult situation and still we cannot tell ourselves the truth. Now, only when we accept our truth as a people shall we begin to heal and chart a new way forward. And when I say us, I mean you, me, our leaders, all of us have to embrace our truth and then the answers to our problems will come to us. I am Mariana Cole, thanking you for being part of the conversation. Do have a good evening.